the creative power of the word. That's the word of God. Now hear this and hear me well. In 1998, at a cost of $3.6 billion, the largest bridge called the Pearl Bridge was built in Japan Island, I mean island of Hoshu with the island of Shikoku. Now, at the length of 6,470 feet, more than 2,300 feet longer than the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. They were trying to connect the two cities and that bridge was built to connect them. But here is a hear me well, the tongue in your mouth has the greatest power to connect the longest distance. The Panama Canal, before it was completed in 1914, if you're, if you're sailing from New York to San Francisco, it meant a journey of 13,000 miles. But when the canal was built, it connected the world of the Atlantic with the Pacific in a short distance. Look at the distance. They connected it. But the mouth, the tongue, the words you speak has power to bring the fastest connection. So words are connectors. Words are what? Words have the capacity to build bridges, build walls, and they have the capacity to also close doors. Worlds connect us to God. Just like bridges connect people and islands, it is with the words that you and I speak that will connect us to our God or put us away from God. But you will not be put away in the name of Jesus. In Genesis chapter 1, God used words as a vehicle to create things from the spiritual realm to manifest in the physical realm. In Genesis chapter 1, God's word said, and God said, and God said, and God said, let there be light, and he saw light. If you read 1, 2, 3, God said, verse 3, and said, in the beginning God said, and verse 4, and God saw the light. If you read verse 6, verse 9, then about 11, then just like that, it said, God said, God said, God said, God said, and in verse 31, God saw. May you see whatever you say from today. Amen. When God wanted something material created, all he did was he spoke. Everything he want, you are seeing in the material world, God spoke them into existence with words. With what? Words. And he said, let us make man in our own image. Now, the image is not just the physical. Because God is a spirit. Is that true? John 4, 24. And if God is a spirit, which means the words you speak, they are not just ordinary words. They carry power, they carry life. Now, I'm, coming, I'm going somewhere. God is a spirit and God spoke. He said, let us make man what? Now I only made so you are the image of God. So if you do things like God, you get it not like God, like God. Now in, the, in Ephesians chapter five, verse one, if you read the Amplified Classic, say, "Be ye imitators of God." Therefore, be imitators of what God. Copy Him and follow His word. Example as well, beloved children, imitate their father. Now all that God did was let there be light, and there was light. So if I want to get to the soul like God, all I need to do is to say, let there be this, and it will come to pass. Is that clear, sir? So because God is a spirit, and you are a spirit with a soul and joining the body. So if I want to get to the soul like God, all I need to do is to imitate him like God. I also have to declare like God, so it is what I declare that I'll see. So if you have not seen anything in your life, you have not created it with your words. So I hear. I go further. If you want to see anything, then you must say it. What you have not seen is something you have not said. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3, it says, Through faith, 
We understand that the wars, look at plural, we are framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen, we are not made of things which do appear. The entire world we are seeing. Now, why did the Bible use words? Why didn't the Bible say world? In the supernatural, we have different worlds. We have the world of prosperity. We have the world of success. We have the world of peace. We have the world of protection. So it is with the word of faith you speak from your mouth that creates those worlds. Yeah, you get what I'm saying now. So if I want to prosper, I have to start saying it after I've done my path of covenant. If I want to see protection, I have to say it. Anything you don't say, you can never see. Anything you have not said, you can never see also. Are you getting me? Until God said it, he did not see it. So our words create our worlds. Our W-O-R-O-D-S create our W-O-R-O-L-D-S. It's right here. Words have creative force that bring into existence that which have never existed before. Words are powerful. Words are what? Words are powerful. Hear this and hear me well. In the kingdom of God, you don't say what you like. You say what is written. Let me say this to you. In case you don't know, free speech is not in the kingdom. You know, in the world, you say, I have a liberty of free speech. True? Even the free speech is not free. Can you go now and talk anything against the president of America and they just leave you? Huh? It's not free speech. Go and say, I call his name and say he's a thief if they don't sue you. You prove it by law where you saw him stealing. So there's no free speech. Free speech has even naturally, even the natural free speech has what? Boundaries. They have their limits. Don't say what. You can't just get up and say the president of this nation is a thief. They will, they will ask you to come and prove it in law court for defamation of character. True? Defamation of character. Is that not true? Confession is not saying anything you like. Confession is saying exactly what God says. And what God says is what? The word. So if I say I'm confessing, I'm saying I'm saying exactly the word of God. It's right here. So say exactly what God's word says in all situations and circumstances. Because words control the events of your life. It's a life and dead are in the power of the tongue. If you can control your mouth, you can protect your life. In Proverbs 13 and verse 3, he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. And he that openeth while his lips shall have what? Destruction. That will not be your portion. In Romans 10.10, 10, for with the heart man believeth unto what? Righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto what? We only know this scripture in the area of altar call. With the mouth, confession, saying what God says, will tell me what I get. Now, salvation means soteria. Everything I can pass about. Is that true? Now, listen. Read this scripture. Not only the area of altar call. Listen. And with the mouth, confession, I said, means saying exactly what God says. So, with the mouth, I am saying exactly what God says. Then, Anything that God has provided redemption, I will have it. Are you getting the Bible? When you read the Bible, don't just read only one content. You know the scripture only for altar call, but it's beyond that. It says, with the mouth, I will say exactly what God says with his confession. And then anything salvation offers will become my portion. I may not understand what I'm saying. Are you getting it? That's Romans 10, 10. So right words will produce right things. And wrong words will produce wrong things. In Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 23, whoso keepeth his mouth, listen, and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. 
Every problem any man has came from his mouth. Proverbs 6 verse 2. Shall we read together one to go? Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. You will not be snared. Refuse to say wrong things. Refuse to what? Speak, for instance, speak success and not failure. Speak what? And not failure. Speak righteousness in Christ, not unworthiness. In my studies, I notice that God's word does not give room for worthiness. That was why when the prodigal son said, I'm not worthy, he said, shut up. Don't say like that. You can confess sin if you commit sin, but you are not unworthy. I'll show you from the Bible. Those are religious statements. They are just what? Unworthy sinners like us. You have already put yourself in a wrong position. God did not say if you, he said if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you. He didn't say if you confess unworthily. Read, I know you read scriptures, but when you read, always ask the Holy Ghost to open your eyes. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Read together, one to go. That we might be, we are made the righteousness of God in him. We are made, which means he took that place and made us. I have made you righteous. So you cannot now come before him and say, on oh, what? I mean, <laughs> so it's wrong. He has made you up. So you cannot come before, you come in sin, ask God to have mercy on you, but don't come before him who has made you righteous and now say you are what? On what? You remain on what that way. It's not the right way to pray. Is that clear, sir? Speak that you have the life of what? God in your mortal body and not the old spirit of inferiority, failure, and frustration. No, no, no. You're not unworthy. In him, we live and move and have what? A being. As 17 verse 28. Is that clear, sir? So speak as an heir of God, as a joint heir with who? Christ. In Colossians 1, 12 to 14. Colossians 1, 12 to 14. It says, give it to the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of inheritance of the saints. Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us to the kingdom of the world? It's their son. In whom we have what? Redemption to his blood, even the forgiveness of what? Say it. Say with me, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Say it that way. Say, God loves me. God loves Say it one more time. I have a rich inheritance have a rich in, Christ. in Christ. Speak success in marriage and not marriage failure. This marriage, I know it will not work. You have already, you have already collapsed the marriage. I know from the first day this money will not work. It's your mouth that crash it. I don't see anything good in this man. Yeah, yeah, man. He will go. He will pack before two of you even meet you. Pack, you have packed already with your mouth. You have already closed the money from here. I know this money will not work. From the first day we marry, I knew it will not go to work. You have already destroyed the marriage. No matter what this man does, he will come back home. It's my husband. I know. I married him. He wedded me so he cannot leave me alone. Even when things are going contra, use your mouth to turn it. Are you guys now? Even when things are not going the way you want, you use your mouth to turn it. I'll show you from the Bible. You use your mouth to turn it to the way you want. <laughs> you can turn any circumstance that's going contrary to the way you want with the words of your mouth in line with the word of God. So here. So now I'll speak success and not failure. Now, confession is simply to affirm what God has said in his word. That's confession. It is giving voice to the word. Giving what? Voice to the word. Now, he said, let us hold fast to our profession. To our what? Hebrews 4, 14. Hebrews 10, 23. The last passage, seeing then that we had a great high priest that is passed into heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our what? Profession. That it we are saying we should hold fast to it. Hebrews said, let us hold fast to the profession of what? Our faith without shaking. You know what God is saying? Keep saying it as long as it's in line with God's word. Keep what? 
don't shake. Stand on the integrity of the word. If you want to create. Now, in Titus 3 verse 8, hear what the Bible says here. Connect the three scriptures. It says, this is a faith saying. And these things I will that thou art fair what? Constantly. That they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. Don't shake. Stand in the midst of the thing. Stand your world. I can't be poor. Even if the whole country is going down, me, I can't be poor. Even when everybody says things are hard, I can't be poor. I'm a giver. There's nothing that will make me poor. And the things we go down from today to go the way you say it. Amen. Say amen. amen. So confess is saying what God has said in his word. It is saying the same thing the scripture says. That's confession. Saying the same thing the scripture what? Keep saying it until what God's word says manifest. Keep what? Until what God's word says manifest. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Being confident of this very thing. That he which had begun a good work in you will perform it on the day of Jesus Christ. So I refuse to shake on the inside. Say it one more time. James 1, 6 and 7. It said, let us ask in faith, nothing wavering. For it that wavered is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and what? Toist. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. So when I say anything, I stand. Because God's word carries life. Carries what? Listen. When you speak God's word, you're speaking life. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. John 63. So God's word has what? Life. And it is that life that goes to create the things you want. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Like this. this is how God's word creates. I will come very practical. Your words are powerful. Who are you? Are you a spirit? Are you a spirit? That which is born is born of what? So you are a spirit primarily, John 3. Now, God is who? A spirit. Listen carefully. Just, just listen. If I say, be blessed. Without understanding, it will produce nothing. But every word that comes from a child of God is anointed. Is what? Because the spirit of God is in you. So when you speak a word, the spirit of God from your mouth, because this is where God created, let there be light. The word he spoke was encapsulated with the Holy Spirit, so it began to produce. Is that true? Because in the beginning, God created the heavens, and the earth was that form, and the spirit of God moved upon what? The face of the waters. The Holy Ghost moved. I'm going to tell you that. And God said, when God spoke, the Holy Spirit was evolved in creation. The Holy Spirit enveloped his word and began to produce. Is that true? Now, when you speak because you are a spirit, and the word that comes from your mouth is also what? Spirit, which is from the Holy Ghost. So when you speak, the Holy Spirit encapsulates, you know, capsule. There's a drug, then the capsule is outside. The Holy Ghost encapsulates your word. And so the word goes to that thing you are speaking to produce, even if the thing is contrary. Is that clear, sir? I don't understand what I'm saying. Let there be light. God did not bother. Light came. I know I will prosper. You have gone to the supernatural to create this prosperity in the realm. It will manifest in the physical. I know I will pass this exam. You have spoken it into the supernatural. So the events of the natural begin to work for you to pass the exams. But this exam is like I will fail. You have also spoken in the, in the supernatural to cause events to bring failure. Because words are inspirited. Words are what? Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, how, how to make the creative power of God's word work? So you understand it. How to make the creative power of the word work? How to make the creative power of the word work? How do I make it work? Number one, constantly feed on the word of God. Constantly what? Constantly feed on the word of God. 
In John 15 verse 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. If you what? So, feed yourself with the word of God. John and Peter, they said to Jesus, Master, we can't go anywhere in John 68 because you have the words of what? Eternal life. He said, what are we? He said, so when Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. We are staying with you because you have the word. So stay with the word of God. Are you getting me, sir? This book of the Lord shall not what? It is what you read that will affect what you believe. Feed the scriptures into your spirit man. So that when you are speaking, when you are saying something, it is coming out of what is loaded on the inside. So here. Your faith will come alive and become a living force when you feed on the word of God. Read books that build your faith in God. Because faith comes by what? Hearing.